welcome. Let me make sure I send out the blast so we all know it's that time. Welcome back to your power call. Welcome back to your power call. If this is your first time, welcome to your power call. We have another exciting, another um, beautiful call that we have in store for today. So I appreciate you all tapping in. Let me make sure I get the message blast sent out so everyone is aware that we are live for your power call this morning. Again, assalamu alaikum to those coming in. And one moment. Just make sure we got everybody's attention and that we're ready to come on in. I pray everyone is doing well. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me as well. That's very important. Okay. All right, let's send this message blast out. Assalamu alaikum. Wait. Oh. All right. Sent that out again. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to your power call. Welcome back to your power call. Let me know if you can see me, you can hear me. And we'll get started in just a couple moments here. So let's see here. Let me pull up both sides so I can see that you all can see. Okay. Right, all right, and let's see. I know you all can hear me on the on the Vimeo side, but let me make sure you can see me. Can you see me? Okay. How about now? I know I had the image up there first. You know, I was getting the, the blast out there, so I apologize for that. But I'm glad you all can hear me. Assalamu alaikum. Again, welcome back to your power call. Up. Oh, okay. Let me see. How about now? Can you hear me now? On the uh, premium side, I had to mute it on that side. I apologize. But as, as everyone comes in, again, assalamu alaikum. That means peace be unto you. If you're unaware of those ancient Arabic uh, greetings, that is our original tongue. Um, so it's not something that we've uh, learned from someone else. This is what we originated on this planet. So we always start and greet each other with the greetings of peace of assalamu alaikum. So I appreciate you all welcoming and coming on in to your power call. If this is your first time on the power call, welcome to your power call. If you're a returning member, welcome back to your power call. Um, as always, you know, we're going to have something informative from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that we'll be tapping into. This will be a, a one day um, lecture that we'll get through is about an hour, a little over an hour and 20 so minutes. So we'll be able to complete the entire lecture. And if you're on the premium side, or if you would like to upgrade to the premium side, uh, click the link. Uh, when well, I click the link, but type in the link www.thepowercall.net upgrade. If you're on an Apple or iPhone device, you'll need to use your web browser to type in that website so that you have access to the payment plan to upgrade to the premium side. So you can share your takeaways and your feedback at the end of the call. 
Um, but if you don't want to share on camera and you or you don't you haven't read you're not ready to upgrade yet, you can utilize the power call testimonial section within the app as well to share your feedback, your takeaways, things that you've learned, things that you discovered not only about yourself but things that you've understood and discovered from the teachers as well as taught to us by the most honorable Elijah. Excuse me. Yes, given to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, so, yes, we're about to get started. Um, I just want to make sure that we had a, a, a sister's class last night. Shout out to Sister Mecca for hosting and Sister Tamora for hosting uh, the uh, sister's only class last night on how to keep our husbands protected. Yes, brothers, we need protection as well. Yes, we are the protectors. But we need protection at home as well. We need we need help as well. So I appreciate the sisters coming out and putting that together last night. If you haven't yet, or if you if you attended, please put your feedback and your takeaways from that uh, class in the power call. Excuse me, in the power call testimonial section as well for those who may have missed it, um, and for those who maybe are not upgraded yet, but they want to get some insight on what was what was shared kind of whet their appetite as what was what's going on in the sisters class let them know what you thought let them know what you think and that's how we also continue to improve on these classes as well by sharing your feedback feedback is welcome the same thing with utilizing the app feedback section in the uh app as well to better let us know what you want um what you like what you don't like we we welcome the feedback because our goal is to give as much value as much um as uh, impact that we can make with the power call with the app um, as well so please utilize these sections to be able to let us know what you think what you feel how you are enjoying the experience all of these things so we can continue to enhance this and grow this as it is growing again those just coming in assalamu alaikum welcome back to your power call welcome to your power call if this is your first time and we can't go without accent or stating as well if you would like to visit your local muhammad mosque or study group in your area please go to www noystudygroup.com and fill out the form the sister will reach out to you provide you with the location information for the local local muhammad master study group for you so you can attend friday to the self-improvement study group or come out to the public meeting on uh sunday as well check the local listing times for those uh meetings and classes so that you can be able to attend and when you attend fill out the sign in sheet send it back to the sister so we can shout you out when you come on out to your local Muhammad Masa study group for uh, self-improvement study group or the public meeting as well. And again, this is not pressure to have you join the Nation of Islam. That's between you and Allah. So if you feel that these teachings are something that's helping you move forward and you feel as if this is your time that you want to accept your own and be yourself, that is your decision. But it's good to expose yourself and see for yourself how these teachings are being taught to us. Um, and as well, you want to be able to continue on this journey. We we are um, sharing these lectures in the morning. So these are good for us to have as well. But it's nothing better than going to the Muhammad Mas local or study group local to you so that you can check out and hear the local representatives of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as well. Be able to continue this education in this classroom of God. So without further ado. As always and customary, we're going to open up in prayer. So let's go ahead and get everything situated. Begin to take the position of prayer that is most comfortable for you. Uh, I said, Brother Clarence said, I can't see the power call. I'm on the app. I'm a member. Um, when you say you can't see the power call, what do you mean? Are you saying you can't see how to upgrade and you're in the app? And then my second question would be, do you have an Apple or iPhone device? But I'll answer that after, after the lecture as well. We'll get to that. But I, I appreciate your question, brother. But all right, let's uh, go ahead and get ready for prayer. All right. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, surely I have turned myself being upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. No associate has he, and this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art the Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, for none guides me to the best of morals but thee. 
and turn me away from the evil and indecent morals, for none turns away from the evil and indecent morals but thee. O Allah, make Muhammad successful and the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou didst make Abraham successful and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. O Allah, bless Muhammad and the true followers of Muhammad, for thou didst bless as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. I mean, all right, all right, all right. So I pray you all receive the message in your inbox this morning to be able to make it to your, uh, your power call this morning. Again, always check your messages, always check the feeds within the spaces that you have access to as well so that you can see the updates so you can see the changes see the the improvements that are being made and also be able to get the announcements that are made for the different classes and different parts of the uh app that is available to you again we have a new class that's available um in the premium side as well um, or excuse me a new course that's available um and we had a class last night with the sisters um and again share your feedback from that class if you attend it um, I'm sure the replay will be available soon. So you'll be able to, if you did miss it, you'll be able to check that out in the premium side as well. But share your testimonials and feedback so that those who um, haven't yet upgraded but want to get an idea what's going on on the premium side, they can know. But also more importantly as well, not more importantly, but just as important as well, share your takeaways and feedback of the power call, the lectures that we're going over in the morning in the power call testimonial section as well. Um, so that those who may have not picked out that point may not have felt that point because they were learning something, they seen something or heard something different that was affecting them personally that they may not have seen or pulled that particular jewel that you found in the power call lecture um, out as well. So be sure to leave your feedback, leave your testimonials in those sections as well. But without further ado, let me share my screen and we'll go ahead and bring the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan up to so another inciting uh, lecture today, which is on the sickness of envy, the sickness of envy. So this will be another informative lecture here as well. So let me go ahead and switch this over. This world into the place we are hearing out of the vision of Minister Louis Farrakhan. And with that, if we could receive our minister with a due reception. Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, thank you so very much for your presence tonight. It's always a joy to be here and to see you, although we're moving almost at uh, whirlwind pace yes, and we have not had a chance to rest hardly a moment in the last uh, seven weeks and it doesn't look like we'll get any for several more tomorrow if it is the will of Allah we will be on prime time live on ABC, I 
think that's channel seven. Yes, sir. And we had to deliberate for a long time to decide which of the many, many, many uh, shows that we are being offered now to finally take. But white folk are very uh, nervous and disturbed as they should be and we should be doubly disturbed at the condition of our people. Yes, sir. And nobody is addressing the concerns of black people adequately and as a result our people are dying at an extremely uh, inordinate rate yes, sir. our young people are under assault and there is a build up of hatred in this country for our people I'm sure you can see it as you move throughout the cities and interact with white people. It's just a growing fear and hatred of black people. Yes, sir. In fact, there was a show on CBS a few days ago talking about the tragedy that 25% of our young men are either in jail or prison, on parole or under court supervision. They say that this represents a lost generation of black people and if something is not done, we will lose another generation. And this uh, CBS report said that America has her own apartheid. And that this is a tragedy by any stretch of the imagination that a whole group of people within a country as great as this should be suffering and dying as black people are suffering and dying. And government is not talking about our suffering. That's right. And the leaders, unfortunately, are not really talking about it. That's right. I think. Um, Mr. John Jacobs of the Urban League in his State of the Black America report was very definitive in the condition of our people. But it doesn't seem as though his words have triggered other black leaders to be very passionately concerned about our future. Well. It is left to us who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who knew and know that that man evolved a program for our people. And it's the only program that there is put forth by any leader that would satisfy the total requirements of a nation of people with an ever-growing population. If it is the will of Allah, I don't really know how this show will go tomorrow, but we will be questioned by one of the toughest reporters in the country, uh, Mr. Sam Donaldson, who I believe gave so much hell to the presidents that they offered him a primetime television show to get him away from the White House Corps of Reporters. He really was the toughest 
a reporter on uh, uh, Reagan for eight years. And I don't think Mr. Bush <laughs> wanted to be bothered with him. So tomorrow, uh, he and Diane Sawyer will question us. Now, I want to go right to the subject matter because um, I am a little exhausted and I didn't want to disappoint you. Envy is one of the worst kinds of spiritual diseases. Any one of us who have some gift or quality that others wish they had or want it is so sad that people will literally hate you for what only God could give you. An envious person is really a devil. No matter what the color of the skin. If your heart is poisoned with the disease of envy, you have become, in your person, a devil. Why is that? Because you, or those who are afflicted with that disease, are not just hateful of the person whom they envy, but they are hateful of the God who gave that person that which they have for which they are being envied. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that an envious person is the worst kind of person. That's a devil. Because an envious person will kill you. Now, that makes you a devil. Because if God is the giver of life, and the giver of gifts, and someone is envious of you because of some gift that God gave you, and that envy reaches the point where it becomes hatred and then hatred gives way to murder, then that person who would rob you of the life that God gave you because of a gift that God gave you. That's the worst kind of human being. Now each of us in our lives have met jealousy and we have met envy. In a magazine called Psychology Today that came out in December 1989 in an article by Mrs. Jane Siabatari titled Will the 1990s be the age of envy. The title on the cover was put this way, Envy Will Turn You Upside Down. Boy, that's a heavy statement. Envy will turn you upside down. She writes, as the door closes on the era of having it all. Well, that era has never opened it up for us. <laughs> she said, we are ripe for a dangerous epidemic of envy. Are you susceptible? Now, we have never had it all. But everything that we have had, every organization that we have built has been destroyed from within because of envy. 
So even though we don't have it all, we'll never get it all. Right. Unless we can uproot and destroy this disease of the heart called envy. Now this woman described the state of envy that many people would degenerate into. And this is why on Sunday I read from the Holy Quran a chapter of refuge. Because right now we as Muslims and I in particular have to seek refuge totally in God from the evil of the mischief of created things. When a person is envious or hateful, they can take that which is natural, created by God, and turn it into that which creates mischief. They can take our nature given by God and with a wicked intent turn the nature and make it respond to a call that leads it to mischief making. Terrible. Allah says in the Quran that we should seek refuge in Allah from a day when darkness overspreads the earth. Meaning that people will become so confused that they will not respond properly to right guidance they will actually hate truth so that darkness will cover them and then gross darkness so that a people who are envious their hearts and their minds are already darkened and whatever light that person may possess is gradually extinguished as the envy increases. Allah says in the Quran that we should seek refuge against those who cast evil suggestions in firm resolutions. There are people that talk to you all the time. And if you're not a discerning one, you don't listen carefully to not just the words, but the way the words are placed. Someone will make a positive assertion, but deep down in it is an evil suggestion. Each one of us have been victims of this and some of us have done this. When you want to talk about somebody that you don't like and you want somebody else to dislike that person as you have come to dislike them. But you don't want to come straight out and say that's a no good so-and-so. So, so you make a firm resolve that sounds so harmless. But in it is an evil suggestion. For instance, you know I was downtown the other day and uh, I just happened to go by the federal building. And guess who I saw coming out? <laughs> and
and then they name a person. What? You know, I've always been somewhat suspicious that this person is an agent or now that's a seed. You may say, well, I don't really think so. But then when you see that person, and they may not be feeling well that day, and they may not even speak because there's so much on their mind, mmm. Mmm. A seed drops so skillfully. You could never accuse the person of saying, they just said, you know, I was by the federal building and I saw so-and-so coming out. Looked like they were coming from the floor that the FBI office was on. <laughs> Terrible. And how many of us fall for that? I seek refuge in Allah, not only from the person who casts evil suggestions in a firm resolution, but I seek refuge in Allah from the evil of the envier when he envies. Now it ends with that envier. Because that is what is happening in the world today. That's what has our people upside down today. That's right. It is envy. Now look, this psychologist wrote, as disappointment grows and as ambitions and desires are thwarted, social conditions are ripe for a destructive epidemic of envy. The all too human emotion defined by Webster's dictionary as the painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another joined with a desire to possess that same advantage. But it's painful for you to see somebody with something that you yourself want. Now, brothers, you may be talking to a certain girl, and you've let your emotions get carried away. You're in love with the girl, but the girl don't seem to feel the same way. She's talking to your friend. Now ain't that a kick in the face. Now the more you look at the girl, the more you like the girl, the more you want the girl, the less the girl pays attention to you. Then you begin to look at your friend real strange. Y'all grew up together, you all were, went to school together, but now something is growing in the heart. Y'all walk the street together, and you hear him talking about this sweet little girl, you know what I mean? And every time he talk about her, you grit your teeth and act like you. And pretty soon you begin to hate him. Because it's like he's taking something from you. It could be jealousy. But jealousy is born out of love. But envy has its root in hate. Now look. This writer says, Envy is not a gentle emotion. Envy is not a passive emotion. Once you envy somebody, you got to act. It's heavy. Envy is aggressive, 
not only do I want what you have, and I want you not to have it, I want to take it away from you. And if I can't do that, I'll spoil or destroy it or you. On television today, they were talking about young black people killing each other over sport jackets, over certain kind of shoes, sneakers. Uh, man, somebody walk up to you and you got L.A. gears on. Or Reeboks. And he said, well, I like that. He don't like it for you. He likes it for him. All right, nigga. Take off them sneakers. You look at them and say, hey, man, what you talking about, man? He pulls out a gun. He's serious. And not only will he take your shoes, he'll kill you for resisting. There's a Muslim brother in Detroit last week, looking sharp, had a nice coat on, standing on the corner, getting ready to take a bus. Somebody walks up to him with a gun and says, look, I want that coat. He said, man, you must be out of your mind. He turned his back to walk away from the man. The man shot him twice, took the coat. Luckily, the brother is alive, but he's damaged. But he just came out of the hospital, and hopefully, he'll be all right. Envy. An envious person is the worst kind of person. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, for they will kill you. I'm getting to something. Jealousy is unlike envy. Jealousy is based on love and focuses on possessing the loved object and removing the rival. But envious people, their envy originates in hate and can be all-consuming, even murderous in intensity. Envious people live in a perpetual state of anxious, competitive comparison, focusing on what others around them have and what they themselves lack until they make themselves sick. All right. This is why our houses and our communities are so destroyed because we envy and we refuse to give credit where credit is due. Cain and Abel were brothers. Abel pleased God with his offering. Cain offered too. But because God did not accept Cain's offering, Cain became envious of his brother. Listen now. Envy grew to hatred. Hatred grew to murder so Cain decided, I'll murder my brother. The Quran said his hatred made it easy for him to murder his brother. Now, I don't think it's an accident that the word able has 
to do with the word ability. Right. Capable. Right. And the more you think like Cain, the more you kill Abel. Uh. Mm. Now, listen to me. Cain and Abel are not necessarily two brothers from the same womb. Cain and Abel are two possibilities in the same human mind. Out of your mind, you offer. Cain was willing to offer from the ground. Abel was willing to offer life. God accepted the offer of life and rejected corn from the ground. He wanted Cain to know something about what pleases him. It don't please God that you sacrifice corn on the altar or some material thing. What God is asking is, give me your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you give me your life in return, I will bless you. But if you try to give me offerings that is easy to give, corn. Hell, you didn't grow it. You plant the seed there, it grow. You take some corn and put it on an altar and give it to me. Well, that's nice. But that ain't about where it's at. All right. Excuse my language. language. We get the point. So Cain offered, I mean, Abel offered, I think it was a sheep or some living thing. Yes, sir. And from that genesis, it grows. Till you get to the New Testament where Jesus comes. And Jesus makes the perfect offering. He offers his life. That's what God wants. He don't want you holding back thinking that you can buy your way into heaven with a dollar or a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. Because the scripture says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. A rich man would give his riches, but himself he holds back. The greatest gift you can give to God is the gift of obedience of your will and submitting your will to do his will, then you have given it all. And when you give that to God, God accepts and rejoices and blesses. Now the cane of self. Every time you get ready to give of yourself to God, the cane of self tries to interfere. Eh? And every time Cain wins, you lose your ability. To see, to think, to plan, to foresee. And that's why the righteous, the vision of the righteous is limited. Because their wickedness have crushed their ability to see. So they have eyes, but they can't see. A a am I making myself clear? Yes, now right within your own self community, there's a battle going on. And these two opposite poles, the spiritual and the carnal, are at war with each other. Yes, sir. And if the carnal is able to kill the spiritual, then the spiritual power is no more. You have no more spiritual ability to rise above the grave of your body. So your spirit is lost and buried in the flesh. And this flesh becomes your grave. 
you live for this. You can't ever grow beyond this. And that's why white folk are so sick. Because their mind is buried in their flesh. So they can only see white. I'm better not because I am better. I'm better because I'm white. That's a sick diabolical mind that's buried in the flesh. See, when your mind is resurrected, then you can see beyond the flesh. Yes, sir. Yes. When your mind is resurrected, you see spiritual things. Yes, and spiritual things are always greater than the carnal things. And that's why the scripture said the fruit of the spirit is love and peace. And long suffering and patience and all of these wonderful characteristics. But the fruit of the carnal mind is envy, enmity, strife, jealousy. See, all of these things show that your ability, you've lost your ability because the Cain side of self is offering flesh but won't submit the will. To do the will of God. Let's go on. Yes, sir. What time is it? 9 15. Can I have a few more minutes? Yes, Thank you. Now look, Saul was the king. David was a little boy. David didn't know he was going to be king. David felt he was going to be a great man. Saul was the king. The people wanted Saul as the king. And he was the first great king of Israel. But as David began to grow, people began to watch the exploits of David and praise David. Saul has killed his thousands. David his tens of thousands. When Saul heard the people praising David more than him, he became not jealous, but envious of David. David was such a faithful servant. Saul had a son named Jonathan. And Jonathan loved David. They got along well. And Jonathan told David that Saul didn't like him. Saul used to play music for David and calm him and rest his mind. But David got so jealous. I mean, Saul got so jealous of David. One day, he threw a spear at him, tried to kill him. And David knew it was time to hat up. <laughs> And David said, I'm out of here. <laughs> and, he went on, and he went on up in the hills. <laughs> but to prove the kind of man that David was, David slipped back into the camp. Saul was asleep. He could have killed Saul, but he loved his king. And he took Saul's, I think, knife or sword and stuck it near his clothing just to show him if I wanted to kill you I could have done that but I love you I don't want any harm to come to you but do you think that changed the heart of Saul? No! It intensified his hatred he couldn't rest until David was dead. But God was with David. Yes, sir. And David ultimately replaced Saul. Saul kind of knew that David was going to be king even before David knew it. And he wanted to kill David because he didn't want David to take his place. Isn't that something? Now, we could go on. There are stories like this all throughout the Bible to tell you what envy will do. Now, Jesus had 12 disciples. And he said, I got 12 of you, but one of you is what? 
a devil. An envious person is the worst kind of person because they will kill you, they will betray you into the hands of your enemy to see you in an uncomfortable position because they hate you not because you're bad but they hate you for being who and what you are because they want to be that themselves Come on. and they're not happy with you being that they want that for themselves and they want to take it from you and if they can't take it from you they will kill you so that you cannot exhibit that quality did you know that Judas was that kind of person Here's where it slips out. There is not a man that does not want to be loved by women except <laughs> except that maybe he has a little problem. But every likes to know that the opposite sex, come on, likes us. Right, brothers? I mean, is that natural or what? Hey, now how many of you have ever taken your wife to see Michael Jackson? <laughs> and Michael go to cutting up, I'm bad, I'm bad, you know it. <laughs> And she start going, you say, sit down. <laughs> so if you want to enjoy yourself, sometimes you better go by yourself, cause <laughs> don't no man like to hear his woman screaming over some other man. Am I right, brother? Yes, sir. <laughs> So you got to learn that if you like, what's that fine brother that sings? Luther Vandross. If you like Luther, be cool. <laughs> Don't swoon around your husband when Luther playing now. Because he's already insecure. And you may find every Luther Vandross record in your house broken. And that's a start. He's going to break your neck after that. <laughs> Seriously, no man wants you to give your attention to another man. That's how. Am I lying, bro? He's made like God. God say the Lord, thy God, I am a jealous God. That's right. I don't want you, Israel, to have another God beside me. That's it. That's the way a man is when he love a woman. He don't want that woman looking at nobody. Am I lying, brother? Now, when a woman starts looking, stretching her neck. <laughs> your brother want to take the neck off. <laughs> and vice versa. She's that way too now. Right, sisters? See, God just put this thing in us. Now, what we got to learn to do is control. Man, when I was younger, I am glad my wife ain't here, so I can tell this one. <laughs> I mean, my wife is a fine woman, you know. Sir, sir, sir. And, you know, when we were younger, I mean, she's fine now. Finer. But in that day, certain other characteristics. <laughs> which I ain't talking about. <laughs> but anyway, 
before I was a Muslim, <laughs> you know, we men ain't got too much sense. We buy our women these fine clothes that accentuate the positive. <laughs> and then we take our fine wife that we have paid for her clothes and do it up. She looking fine. And you take her to a place where I was playing at the time in the nightclub. She's sitting on the bar stool, I'm singing. But I ain't blind. I got my eye on what is mine. And I see some dude oozing and easing up next to my wife. I'm singing, but I ain't digging this, you know. You talk about a man about to go crazy. And look like she was liking this attention, you know what I mean? My set was supposed to be 40 minutes, I cut it. I had to get down and see whether what I was looking at was altogether what I was seeing. And I remember my action, I really acted the fool that night. Cause I was threatening to whoop her, you know what I mean? Now she might have won that one, but <laughs> I still felt I should make the threat. <laughs> My wife knew I was serious, boy. But the point is, no man wants another man to be loved by his wife. Now I become a Muslim. I know that Islam is the right way. My teacher was Malcolm X. Now anybody that came along in those days, if you know Malcolm, Malcolm was a powerful black man. Unmarried. So all the sisters Doug Malcolm, including the married sisters, because he was the example of the man that we were trying to become. Now, brothers, here's where control and intelligence and balance comes in. Yes, sir. Shut up. <laughs> When your wife sees a developed model of a man, what she really loves is the model. That's all it is. That model is what she hopes and knows that her husband can grow into if he stays the course. But if we get all bent out of shape. Uh, honey. Uh, uh, I think we ought to go to the church. I ain't coming back to this place no more. What's wrong? My wife seen a model of what God has put in her heart to love before she was born into the world. This is God's woman. And she's born into this world to love God. And when you and I grow into a receptacle in which is the wisdom and the spirit of God, your wife will love you. She can't help it. But you got to keep growing into that. Right. Not envying the teacher right. who will make you into that because your wife seems enamored or loves that. She's in love with the ideal that she believes right. is in the person. Yes, right. I love 
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and my wife loved him. And my wife loved Malcolm and I loved Malcolm. Yes, sir. She couldn't beat me loving Malcolm. All right. And she couldn't beat me loving the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Come on. My leader and teacher was more man than I would ever be. But as long as I loved him yes, sir. and was not envious of him, then I could grow into him. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Oh, praise the Duke of Atlanta. Now, now, that Judas saw Jesus and this woman Taking ointment, putting it on her hair, Come on. and using her hair and the ointment to anoint the feet of Jesus. Now, I don't know how things were 2,000 years ago, but just imagine a fine looking woman with long hair. And she takes her hair and puts ointment on her hair and uses her hair to anoint the foot of Jesus. Judas is standing by looking. Now inside he said, damn, I sure wish she would do my hair like that or my foot like that. But he don't want to say to Jesus, hey Jesus. I like her too. So he says to Jesus, he don't even talk to Jesus, he talks to the woman. He said, look, why are you taking that expensive ointment, rubbing it on his foot? Don't you realize we could have taken that ointment, sold it, got 300 pence and given it to the poor? Check it out. He used the poor. As though he cared more for the poor than Jesus. Come on. Jesus said, Oh, Judas, the poor, you know, will always be with you. I'm only going to be with you a short while. Leave her alone, Judas. She's doing this against the day of my burial. Something about woman. She seems to sense and know when a man is in trouble. I learned this from my daughter, Holiday. She was one and a half years old. But even at that tender age, that child could sense when her father was troubled. And she would walk up to the bed where I was laying, thinking of some problem that was involved with the mosque. And she would come over and just pat my chest. And I looked at that girl and I said, mm, mm, mm. I said, it's all in the woman. She can't help herself. She's born to console the man who works for God. She's born to console the man who gives his life. And brothers, if you want a woman to love you, you got to stop being a nigga. Understanding that when we live for the higher power, That's right. Come on, man. this woman is created by God to serve you when you serve the higher power. And she does not think 
get beneath her dignity as a woman to serve a man who is trying to serve God. I'd like to close this subject. Joseph had a dream that the sun, the moon, and 11 stars, I think it was, bowed to him. His father told him, don't tell your dream to your brothers. But he shared his dream with his brothers and his brothers became envious and conspired to kill him. Beloved, have you ever wondered why the Jews are so angry with us and with Louis Farrakhan in particular? Come on. I have never asked any with me in private or in public to do one thing evil to any man. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's one hundred percent right. These that are with me would never desecrate a synagogue. No sir. No sir. Not one. Why then am I so hated that I would say to the Jews, look, any of you that wish to sit down and dialogue with me, I would be glad to talk with you. And the Jews say, it's phony. We will always sit down with former anti-Semites who have repudiated their hostility and hatred toward Jews. But Louis Farrakhan has not passed that test. I mean, look at the arrogance of a people who have continually crushed us. Right, right, right. And we have not made any precondition That's right. talk to, us. to sit down and talk with them, but they now want some precondition. They act by me as they act by the Palestinians. They stole the land from the Palestinians. Right. And now don't even want to sit down with the PLO right. to work out a peace. Right. That's right. See? Yes, sir. What's at the core of it? Come on. If you look in this Bible and in the Quran, but more in the Bible, the Jews hated Jesus. I mean, one disguised at all, they hated him. And the Jews hated Paul. They didn't disguise it in this book. Did they? No, sir. no, sir. Why did they hate Jesus? Because they thought more of themselves than they should. Jesus pointed out their hypocrisy, their wrong, and gave them a way to come up out of it. And instead of thanking him, they hated him, then sought to kill him. I read an article today by a Jew in a Washington paper who said that if there was a taxi cab that he knew was going to hell, he wouldn't even move his finger in words. He wouldn't move his finger to call a taxi for me even if the taxi was taking me straight to hell. Now that's hate. He don't want 
hell from me. He wants something worse than that. So he wouldn't even move his finger to call a taxi for me to get in it, even if the taxi is going straight to hell. Now, brother and sister, if that ain't hate, it'll have to do <laughs> till the real thing comes along. But that's hate. But why do they hate me? It is because they know that we have that which will supplant their power and their rule. Yes, sir. And just like Saul yes, sir. hated David because David was to be the new king. Yes, sir. Jews know that you yes, sir. Come on. and we yes. are going to be the new rulers in that which God makes new and it just galls them and grits them when a man comes along that will preach that truth that will set you free yes. and put you on top yes, so sir. now they're gritting their teeth because they are being replaced yes, sir. envy makes you the worst kind of person for the envier will what? Yeah. Murder you. But that's not all. I have some brothers. Come on. Who say they love the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. But they hate me. They call me a hypocrite. They call me a deceiver. They call me all kinds of evil names. But God blesses me. That's right. That's right. With the ability yes. to do what none of them That's right. do. are doing. That's right. Why don't they have the ability since they had it when he was here right. but they don't have it now it's right. because the king right. in them is killing their ability and what is rising up in them is envy because I have what they think belongs to them I have what they want for themselves and so their envy is not passive it is active it is aggressive and therefore they want to take it from me That's right. and so they plot against my life it's true there are those in the Islamic world That's right. Listen. that know how important America is right to the whole movement of Islam in the world. They know that America, if America turns to Islam, America will revive the whole world of Islam. But they want Islam to come from white people and not from black people. Right. Right. Yes, sir. And then if it comes from black people, those black people must be under their control. Right. 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 That's right. right. Yes, sir. Some of our Muslim brothers feel that they've made a Muslim only when they make the Muslim in the image of themselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. And if there's one among us who is a Muslim but refuses to be made into the image of an Arab or the image of a Pakistani right. or the image of some other Muslim, right. That's right. That's right. then they cannot stand that man being successful. So the thought is kill him. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So the Jews want him dead. How do you want him? Who do you want? Farrakhan. How do you want him? Dead. See? That's the Jews. But my brothers are singing that same tune. The government singing that same tune. What have I done? They see a wisdom yes. from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yes. 
that you were listening to. That's right. That's right. And I, whom my brothers want to kill, have nothing in my heart but good for them. That's right. That's right. That's right. Abel said in the Quran, I will not raise my hand against you. And I have not taught one around me to raise their hand against their brother except in self-defense. That's right. That's right. That's right. I seek refuge in Allah from the envier when he envies. You are becoming a beautiful community. Just look at yourselves. I wish you could see you like I'm looking at you. You are beautiful. And the more you stay under this word, the more beautiful you will become. And the more you learn to cast off the disease of the heart of envy, knowing that your God didn't give somebody else and not give you also. And believe me, each one of us have something to bring to this great work. And the more you uproot envy by retaining God in your consciousness, you will find your community coming together stronger, tighter, more beautiful, yes, and sir. able to resist any force yes, sir. that will come against us and so as I leave you brothers and sisters I am putting before the government of the United States of America the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because it's time yes sir, yes, sir. That's right. they don't have any solution for us right. Yes, sir. that's right <laughs> And I'm saying to the government, Come on. we don't need to live on welfare. That's right. That's right. Brothers, you're getting a welfare check. Sisters, you're getting a welfare check. I mean, we got to live. So if you're getting one, I'm not condemning it. But I am saying that welfare, if you turn it around, means farewell, you know? That's right. That's right. It means bye to the spirit of self-determination yes. Yes. yes it means so long right to the spirit that god gives to every human right. being and the duty that god gives to every human being to do something for That's self right. yes sir it makes you a slave yes sir welfare That's right. farewell Look at the homes that you live in. These apartments, they're substandard. Very few of us have a home. Most of us live in apartments and we're lucky to get through the winter. We have to put plastic up on the windows. We have to burn little space heaters. A gas company. The the oil company, right. the, the electric company, they gouge our eyes out That's right. during the winter to keep That's warm. Right. Yes, sir. Why should we live like this? Right. When our fathers worked for 300 years right. to give America the wealth that she has. That's right. That's right. When we built the country, That's listen right. to me good now, and then fought bled and died to keep it, Tell it. Right. and still don't have anything. That's right. That's right. They took tax dollars, yes, right. sir. money that belongs to us, right. and they rebuilt Germany. Built That's, Germany. Right. That's, right. That's right. They took money that belongs to us, they rebuilt Japan. Now right. Japan is number one in nope. the world, but we still in the ghetto, nobody gives a damn Tell about it. us. Yes, this gotta stop. Yes, sir. So I'm saying to them, look, 
We don't want welfare. That's right. That's right. Just give us what you owe. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we'll make it. That's right. Now they're giving it to the Japanese. That's right. right. How long were the Japanese deprived? Only four years. They took away all the Japanese property, put them in a concentration camp for four years, and they're giving the Japanese billions of dollars. That's right. That's right. One but a few thousand of them. But it's millions of us. Not for four years, but for 400 years. Then on top of that, every time we got a leader that would help us, they killed him. That's right. That's right. That's right. They got to pay for this. One way or another, they got to pay. And so, we have to understand what Brother Farrakhan is asking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Brother Farrakhan is not saying all oh, black people, let's jump up and go back to Africa. Right. They can play. No, that's too easy on white folks. Yes, sir. Tell it. Go ahead. That's right. That's right. No, no, no. We built this. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, brother. This is as much ours, if not more so, than these second generation and third generation whites who just got here. That's when they got here, they met us here. That's right. Yes, sir. We're not saying we all should pack up and go, but what we are saying is look here. Integration was a hypocritical trick. Right. You all know you never intended to reconcile the differences between black and white. That's right. That's right. We fared better under segregation than we are faring under right. integration. <laughs> Many of you in this room came from the South. Your parents came from the South. Oh, it was rough down there. But look, we had our own bus company. That's right. That's right. That's right. Our own hotels, yes, sir. motels, yes, sir. filling stations. Come on. That's right. We had our own insurance company. That's right. Segregation forced us to do something for ourselves. But the moment they said we could spend our money with white folk, right. our bus companies folded, right. our filling station folded, right. our hotels closed down, our motels closed it. down, our restaurants closed down, our insurance companies got weaker. Right. Right. We didn't gain. No, the Jews gained. That's right. That's right. Tell the truth. The sissies gained. That's right. That's right. Women gained. That's right. But the black people who fought and died with Dr. King, the little black brothers who threw Molotov cocktails and lit up these cities. Right. right. What did you get from it? Yeah. You got nothing but your fire bombs put black people on the newspapers, right. on television, in boardroom, and in white folk bedroom. Right. That's right. right. And you still in the ghetto. That's right. Getting worse off. That's right. Somebody, Somebody has to speak for that. Yes. That's right. That's right. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me, don't speak for some. That's right. That's right. Speak for all. Speak for all. <laughs> and so we propose this. That just like these white folks set up the state of Israel for the Jews, we are asking all those who had a part in bringing us to this condition. That's right. You got to help black people get up out of it. We didn't give up our right to Africa. That's right. When you kidnap somebody from their home and hold them in another place for uh, some time, that don't mean they can't go home if they want to. But 
if you keep me in a house and then you make me build a house, then fight to keep the house, then I recognize that I got a house of my own. Part of your house belonged to me, but I still got a right. home to go to. That's right. Uh, right. Look at this now. Okay. What I'm suggesting is that these white folk are putting our young people in jail, That's right. killing them, warehousing them, destroying them. I'm saying let all the prisoners go free. Look, we got 600,000 strong black men in jail. That's right. And some of you been there too. That's right. And you know you ain't no criminal. That's right. Come on now. All right. Brothers, if I ask you a question, I want you to be honest. How many of you have spent any time at all in the Cook County Jail or in any jail? Would you raise your hand? Now let's look at this. Okay, thank you. Sisters raising their hand too. Thank you, sisters. What, would you raise them again? All right, thank you. Now look, if you spend any time in jail, now listen to me. Do you see yourself as a bad person? You see yourself as a person that never was offered the right chance, the proper opportunity. You're not bad people, brother. But you know the moment you go to jail and get a record, you keep on paying for the little jive crime that you did. Nobody wants to hire you because you got a record. Is that right? That's right. How many of you that have been in prison can't seem to find a job? Would you raise your hand? That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now, brother and sister, what time is it? 10 o'clock. Got to go. But what we're saying to white folks is this. We know the government got a plan to kill our people. That's right. And we're saying to Pharaoh, look, don't kill them. That's right. Let them go. That's right. If you don't have anything for them to do, you're not going to prepare a future for them, let them go and let us prepare a future for ourselves. That's right. We believe that on the African continent there are millions of square miles of land that are unused. And what we are asking our brothers and sisters in Africa is give us your brothers and sisters in the Western Hemisphere. Territory. That's right. That is fertile. That's right. That has some mineral strength to it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, and an outlet to the sea. That's right. And let me be free. Don't hinder me from teaching my people, meaning you, of the time and what must be done. You cannot hang around no more laying down on white people. You got to get up and do for yourself or God will destroy you because it's time you are no longer to serve white people. Right, You've right. got to serve yourself. Yes, sir, sir. Now listen, listen. Let me teach my people. And then we put it to a vote. How many would like to stay? And how many would like to go to build a new nation? For our people. I'm not asking you to say anything right now. I'm asking you just to think. Right. On possibility. Right. Now all the Jews didn't leave from wherever they were. That's right. That's right. Some went to make Israel. And they made Israel a hope for all Jews. Right. Right. Come on. That's right. That's right. Israel was a desert 40 years ago. That's right. That's right. But with some money and ingenuity, That's right. they've turned the desert. That's right into a paradise. 
And look, Africa ain't no desert. They got plenty of desert in Africa, and we don't want nobody dropping us off in <laughs> that desert. That's right. <laughs> Tell them, brother. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> but look, wait, wait, just listen to this. Look at what we've gained. Look at the knowledge that's among us. We are the most knowledgeable black people anywhere on this earth. That's the blessing of growing up in Pharaoh's house. We've learned all the arts and sciences of the world ruler. Now we can take it a step beyond with the knowledge of self. Now what I'm asking white folks to do, now listen to this. Give us the reparations that we'll do. Okay? Let the prisoners go. Let them do their time building a new reality. You don't see them anyway. So how you gonna miss what's hidden away in a prison? Right. Now you sisters that ain't got no man, listen to me good. 600,000 black men <laughs> that ain't got nothing but time to pump it up. And they in jail buff down. <laughs> Man, you let them brothers go. I know y'all gonna say, let me go too. <laughs> now suppose, suppose we got territory. Right. And we said to the government of America, okay, the money that you are paying to upkeep them in the jail, mm -hmm. you give that to us plus what you owe us. And we gather all these knowledgeable brothers and sisters that don't have a job. Now don't tell me you can't move 500,000 black people. Because we saw you move 500,000 soldiers from here to Vietnam. So we know you can move them when you want to move them. We know it can be done. Right. Good point. And look here brothers. We go on in and lay the infrastructure Man. and build us up cities and towns yes. and set up your flag. Yes. Yes. Now just, just feel it. Just feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. God, that thing feel good. If you ain't ready to leave, Pharaoh, hey, we get dual citizenship. Right, right, right. You ain't got to renounce being a citizen here because I told you they owe us as much on this side as we are owed on that side, so we'll keep dual citizenship. So we can go back and forth across the Atlantic, you right. understand? Right. But now, but check it out. Just, excuse me a minute, let's go to Africa a minute. We're on, we on the other side, and we got our own flag, brother. Right. That's right. Come on. We got our own, listen now, our own government. We making laws now for ourselves. Right. Talk to us. Setting up our schools. We ain't got to teach George Washington. We teach. We teach our children that which makes them strong in themselves. We go to building, but we got to reform. And you see, when you're building for yourself, there's your reformation right there, man. You are not a criminal. And when you see the work of your hands building cities and towns, and you stand back and look, and this one is called so-and-so-ville. All right. Maybe your name. <laughs> Let me just think about that. Name the towns after your heroes. We had to live in Chicago, New York. No, no. Come on. We in Garveyville. <laughs> Look, man. Wherever you are, that's yours. Right. Walk on earth that belongs.
belongs to you. And you know you got to have borders. And if you're going to have borders, you got to be able to protect your borders. So I just go to the government and say, look, we can't be in our own nation without the weapons to protect our nation. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. And we already got 600,000 buffed out. That's right. Yeah. Men. And we got to have 600,000 buffed out sisters. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man. We got to have the weapons to protect right. our land, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, and then we start moving in Africa. Yes. Sir. All right. Learning the language and then taking this knowledge of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and moving yes, sir. Yes, sir. until we create a United States of Africa. Right. Till we, from the Cape all the way to Cairo, we yes. move Africa strong. Now we got millions over here, right. and you got 80 million or so down in Brazil. Right. Come on. You got the Caribbean right. coming, yes, yes, and now you got Africa. Yes. And we take the technology we learn from white folk, yes. and we develop the gold and the diamonds and the iron ore, which whitey needs. To become a master, then we trade. That's right. We're going to have our problems, but at least that's our problem. That we don't mind having to be independent. Then if the United Nations is still around, look at it. Then you send your ambassador to the United Nations. Right. You got a seaport, an airport. All right. Mr. Pilot, stand up. Miss Pilot, stand up. Navigator, ship builders. You need all of that when you're talking about building a nation. We have to build the infrastructure of Africa to tie every African nation together with railroads, brother. So that if there's a famine in Ethiopia, Sudan got rich land, right. brother. Right. If it's cultivated right, it right. could feed all of Africa right. Right, right out of the Sudan. Right. Right. So when one part of our nation is sick, like it was when they had all that snow out here and it was killing the livestock, hay came from all over the That's country right. That's dropping right. here to feed the That's livestock. Right. That's the way it's got to be yes. in Africa. That's, right. That's the way it's got to be in the Caribbean. Right. There's hope for us. There is yes, hope. sir. We don't have to stay around here and die. No, sir. We got to have possibilities. And don't think it can't be done. It's better for them to think about doing that than to think about killing us all through disease, AIDS, cancer, drugs gang warfare, putting guns in our hand to destroy one another. What you say? We got to go for it. Yes, sir. We got to go for it. So, I thank you. I thank Allah. I thank Allah for this day and for each of us and for the time that has brought us to this point where we are ready now more than ever to do something for ourselves. Now as you leave here tonight, I want you to remember what you were taught. And I want you to look in your hearts and see if you feel something against your brother or sister because of something that they have that you want. And I want you to ask Allah tonight to help to remove that from your heart and remember that you are not a righteous person. You are not a good person. You're not a Muslim until you want for your brother what you want for yourself. Until you want for your sister what you want.
for yourself. And what do you want for yourself? The best. That's right. That's right. So when you see your brother with it, know that yours is coming too. Yes, sir. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace and thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I know you have pulled something from this. This is another, like I said, another impactful and great lecture from the minister to help us continue to self-improve, get a better understanding of what envy is, knowing the difference between envy and jealousy and what's, where, the, where it's rooted from or what it's born from. Um, so I know if you have some takeaways, uh, please raise your hand if you have some takeaways. Um, if you're on the premium side, be sure to raise your hand so you can come on up. Uh, also, make sure you can unmute yourself as well when you do raise your hand. Um, and you can put your video on if you would like as well. Um, but if you are not on the premium side, be sure to go to www.thepowercall.net, upgrade, come on over to the premium side um, so that you can share your takeaways on the call live. Enjoy the courses and classes that we have available. Um, just wanted to make an announcement. We have brother, uh, brothers only spaces. We have sister only spaces, but you can only get accepted or approved to be in those spaces if you are a premium member. So I know I, I've looked and seen there's a lot of brothers who've asked to be into the brothers only space, but you haven't upgraded. So just because you see the space is available and that you can request it, um, your request would not be answered until you've upgraded. So we check that uh, on a regular basis as well to approve those who have upgraded so that they can be accepted in to that particular space so just be mindful if you're waiting on uh, approval to come in um, and you've already upgraded just be patient we'll go ahead and get you accepted in but if you're waiting on approval and you have an upgrade that's the reason why you're still waiting if you've been waiting for a while um, so just be mindful of that www.thepowercall.net if you're on an apple or iphone device you will need to use your web browser or if you're using an android device be sure to upgrade within the app so that you can get access to the premium side and help support the power call, your power call um, as well. Again, if you would like to share takeaways, you're on the premium side, please raise your hand so we can bring you on up. Um, but if you're not in a space where you can uh, share your takeaways on the call and you still have takeaways that you would like to share, please utilize the power call testimonial space. Also, if you attended the class last night, the sisters only class last night, please share your takeaways and feedback in the power call testimonials. Again, that space is used for your takeaways, your feedback from the classes and the lectures that we listen to. Um, specifically for the classes, we want to get your feedback because that helps uh, the sisters that, that handle the class understand what they can do, how they were able to impact and uh, empower you and be able to help you. But also um, just to share with those who haven't been able to attend or haven't upgraded, they can understand what was taking place so that they can, you know, get a glimpse of what is available on the premium side as well. Also, do not be afraid to utilize the app feedback space to be able to share your feedback. There are polls, there are questions asked so that we can see what we need to continue to add on, in increase or uh, add value to and upgrade. So be sure to do that um, as well. So let me make sure that the Vimeo side can hear us. Let me do that real quick. One moment, then I can bring Sister Yolanda up. Thank you for raising your hand. One second here. There we go. All right. All right, Sister Yolanda, you can go ahead. Hi, Salam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salam. Do I sound echoey? I'm in the story. A little bit, but I can hear you okay. okay. Uh, this um, lecture really uh, draws me to study God 18, rising above emotions into the thinking of a God, especially as he delved into 
envy, envy, envious. Envious person is really a devil no matter what the color. They will kill you. And as I reflect on the statement, they will kill you. What comes to my mind is, it's not necessarily a physical kill death, but the kill you, as in, as I look at it for myself, the spirit that I possess, trying, striving to continuously pers- uh, have the spirits of a law God, the 99 attributes, they'll kill you in the way of taking your joy, your forgiveness, your being merciful, having understanding, the love of yourself, being kind, all those attributes that we have in us, that's the kill that comes to my mind. And it's possibly as well a physical death as well. But since I'm still alive, praise me to Allah, I look at those attributes that they try to kill within myself. And envy is not a passive emotion. And to sum up what he went on to say about that, it's aggressive. So, again, Sister Yolanda, striving to rise above emotions into the thinking of God, even if someone comes now my dwelling, and they're jealous, they're envious, and whatever is not a good, and try to be that giant in my path, I constantly reflect back on rising above emotions into the thinking of a God, because I don't know what it is that they have what's going on inside of them, but I know I'm responsible for how I respond. Um, I'm responsible for my countenance and how I appear. And even though I strive to appear as a good MGT, striving MGT, they may not even like that. But that's not something for me to worry about. I have to continue in my striving and continue to um, have that sweet countenance of self. Another thing he mentioned, women born to console the men that works, the man that works for God. I'm paraphrasing. I may not have it exactly quoted correctly. But in my uh, life, in the past that I have experienced, and I'm understanding that I am the second self of God, let me not move forward trying to console the potential in the main. If I just um, attract myself to the outer shell and I really haven't or I haven't gotten to know the content or the attributes that that man possess, let me be careful because it's in us, God put it in us as women to console the man that's under, in my uh, words, I put under, I guess, the direction, the leadership, and the striving to be the, the little God. Not the supreme being, but the little God. Even in the FOI, you know, everybody that have a bow tie and headpiece on, are we actually striving to, um, perfect and carry out our restrictive laws? Are we striving to um, kill the envy in us? So this is a very, uh, this is very good. Everything is always so good. I, I thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for his continuing striving and being a great example in my life. And the Father that he was under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I just, I'm so very, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. He's still coming with us, say that right. I just, I'm just as grateful. And again, I, I appreciate Brother Ben and the all staff that um, make this call possible. 
because this is one of the ways that I continue to strive and I'm put in remembrance of these teachings. I saw my lake. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, thank you, sister. All praises due to Allah. Uh, that was a, a great point. That second point that you brought out um, about um, a daughter's nature to want to comfort. Um, I, I, you know, this is a safe space, so I, I you know, I'm gonna utilize the safe space. You know, you all not gonna judge me, but um, so I've had, you know, I'm not, a, I don't have a biological child, but I am a guardian over um, a, a, a young daughter. Um, she's five years old. Um, and there was a moment where I was, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, at the point where I'm mastering these emotions. I, I got very angry at a particular situation um, and was out of my character. And the only thing that she knew to do was to go in her room and get one of her books and give it to me. And she said, I'm giving you this so you can fan yourself. Because I was sweating, you know, when you talk about rising of, of, of emo rising above emotions, we was reading that. And I was like looking at the science and I'm like, okay, that's why I was sweating and getting all, you know, all, all inflamed that way. And the fact that she, that's what she just naturally went to go do to be able to give me some relief in that moment. It really... Um, brought to me that thought when, when the minister brought that out about that nature and that natural ability to want to comfort. Um, and, and that's, it's so true. It's so true that if you are striving and, and not that in that moment, I was striving to be, um, a God, but in that moment, you know, I was other than myself, but she just thought of the natural thing to be able to provide some, some level of relief in that moment for me. So I appreciate the minister bringing that up because that is so important for us to be conscious of what has been provided to us. Um, because definitely we may not know the abilities that are that is in the women that are in your life, your, your, your daughters, your children, all of them are gifts to us. Allah has created the uh, created us in his image and likeness. So there's attributes that can be profound and expressed in one another, which is why we have to be so careful with one another as well, because we don't know what Allah has put on your fellow brother, your fellow sister, your children, your parents, and what they can be doing, regardless of the state that they may be in. Or what condition they may be in or, or level of development that they're in to help mold you into a better individual and a better person. So I, I really wanted to, to speak on that point as well. So I appreciate you bringing that up to see Yolanda as well. Um, Sister Yasina, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, there's nothing like being a girl, especially when we're, when we're reared by in a proper environment. Um, and just like what you just said about your beautiful daughter, I, I get that with my girls when I'm, um, when I'm going through some things, they'll come give me hugs and kisses, uh, and they don't even have to know what's going on. It's just, you know, our counselors, um, and that, that transfer of energy is powerful. So when I was listening to the minister and listening to Sister Yolanda, what came to mind to me was the fact that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave us Surahs 113 and 114 uh, to recite daily. And Surah 113 says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn." from the evil of that which he has created, and from the evil of intense dark, darkness when it comes, and from the evil of those who cast evil suggestions and firm resolutions, and from the evil of the envier when he envies. And then Surah 114, Al-Nah says, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of men, the King of men, the God of men, from the evil of the whisperings of the slinking devil, who whispers into the hearts of men from among the jinn and the men. And because of the time that we are living in, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he said to us, commit those to memory, commit them to heart, because we're not only seeking refuge from outside, devils we're seeking refuge from those internal stripes that we deal with every day or in certain circumstances and 
it also took what she said also took me to Sora 35. I at I at if I can find it really quick. Um, I can't remember. I, I can't. I think it's Sora 35. I at eight. It says, "Is he whose evil deeds may fair seem it to him, so that he considers it good?" Now, surely Allah leaves an error whom he pleases and guides a right whom he pleases. So let not your soul waste in grief for them. Surely Allah is nor of what they do. So we have to allow people. Um, people are going to hate and they're going to be jealous and they're going to be envious. And But nobody bothers you when you're not doing anything. Nobody bothers you when you're not striving to do better than, than what you did yesterday. And nobody bothers you if they don't see the light of God in you. So you're, we're always going to encounter. When this first concept, expect the devil at every level. So if that's for him, we got to expect it for ourselves also. And the last thing I will say is the Honorable, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in message to the black man on page 159, he, he put a prayer on the confidence game through prayers. And he says, and the prayer is, O oh Allah, there is none who can withhold what thou grantest, and there is none who can give what thou withholdest. And greatness does not benefit any possessor of greatness that's against thee. And I just had this conversation with my daughters this morning, reminding them that what's for you is for you. Nobody can have that but you unless Allah takes it from you and gives it to someone else. But what's for you is for you. So... Don't worry about what you have somebody else taking it unless you give it to them. But they can't take it. And what's for them is for them. So when, we're, when, when we know that, in my humble opinion, when we know that, even, if it, ta even if, if it takes time and patience, you can't have what somebody, what, a, what Allah has deigned for somebody else. You sh we should honor and respect that because when we're, when we're trying to get what's not ours, one, we're wasting time and we're going against the commandments and the will of Allah. So, develop, we said this, I said, develop your own gifts and talents. Find out what Allah, his attributes that he's, that he's putting each and every one of us. And if we're trying to cultivate our own selves, then we're not looking at anybody else except to say praise be to Allah for what Allah has granted them. Assalamualaikum. Wa well, alaikum salam. All praise due to Allah. Thank you, Sister Yasina. Um, excellent point as well um, that you brought out as well because that that coveting of what other people have is something that social media makes you do. We are bombarded with everyone showing their highlight reels and what new thing they got and what they're doing and if we don't have control over our desires our emotions the way we feel about what our brother and sister is doing we will become envious of it and and when the minister brought out how jealousy is born out of love and envy is born out of hate and how hate can make it easy for you to kill. So Cain's hatred made it easy for him to kill Abel. And we have to be willing to submit to this information because we don't want to get found envying one another. It could be something as simple as someone getting a certain assignment or having this certain post that they're taking as well that we can become like, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm making all my prayers. I'm doing this, that, and the third. And and, and I'm not getting the same post or the same responsibility or privilege as this person. We got to be careful because we don't know, for one, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We only see what we're being, what we're being shown at the time. We don't know what trials and the kind of tie back to social media. We don't know what that brother or sister had to sacrifice and the, the, the times that they put in to be able to get what it is that they're showing you. We, we we look at things and say, oh, one day they were down, next day they were up. And now we're like, oh, they are overnight success. But many times it takes years, sometimes decades to be that quote unquote overnight success. But we only see what we see as that or what we're coveting after and us wanting what they have. Um, and a minister, the minister brought out in another lecture as well. I don't have the title offhand, so I don't want to misquote. But he spoke on uh, those who 
coveted after his position. He's saying, well, I see the minister has this type of car or this type of um, suits and things like that. Maybe if I were to speak like him, maybe I could have that too. So you gotta, we got to really be control of our thoughts um, and also be mindful of those conversations that people are having. You will be amazed at the subtlety of seeds that are dropped on our minds by individuals that may look at us as being able to say, oh, this person can speak well, or this person can do this, that, and the third well. Why aren't you um, doing this or doing that? So we have to just be mindful, and that's why this is about self-improvement, looking at ourselves. The minister has these lectures for us to show as a mirror. These teachings are to give us a mirror. He brought out, um, I believe we talked about it on Satan and the Mastery of Sexual Urges, where he said these teachings are not to make us guilty. Is to put up a mirror, give us a measuring stick to look at where we are on the spectrum, and I'm paraphrasing, to give us on, on the spectrum to see where, how far off are we and what we need to improve on so we can get back on track. It's not for us to feel bad about where we currently are, the way we think right now, but it's to tell us, okay, this is what I need to improve on. This is where I need to, need to go in order to get back on that path so that we can get back into our rightful position that we were designed and, and purposely created for as well. So... So much was was brought out in this particular particular lecture that, and, and even when we did, and, and Sister Yolanda brought it out as well about study guide number eighteen, how this marries right up to it because it broke it down in study guide eighteen about Cain and Abel, the reason why Abel's offering was accepted and why Cain's was not, what lesson was was being taught or being expressed to Cain that he failed to understand because his emotions didn't allow him to do so and provoked him to murder his brother how the sacrifice was to give his life and the minister brought out how you the the true sacrifice let me make sure I got my notes right um but you want yeah give me your life as a sacrifice and be blessed not what is what comes easy to you so like he said that the, you know giving corn or the veg vegetation of the earth Cain didn't have to do anything. He just planted the seeds, so-called, and, and, and God made it grow. Allah made it grow. So you him offering these things from the ground was no true sacrifice of him. But Abel gave a life. He gave in that symbol of humbleness of saying, I'm willing to give my best. I'm giving my, my life the best of what I have is what made him um, receive that favor from God as well. So we just got to make sure that we also are giving our best. We don't want to give Allah our spare time. We don't want to give our fellow brothers and sisters our spare time in the sense that we're giving them less than what they deserve because we have to love each other as, as the Bible tells us that Jesus said that love each other even as much as I loved you. So we want to make sure that we are doing what we want others to do to us, if not more. And even when you see your, like as Sister Yasina brought out as well, when you see your fellow brother or sister have something, you should know that that means you, it's coming to you as well. We are reflections of each other. One thing that um, I've been learning, and, and the brothers um, here in Richmond have been, you know, when I when they they, they greet me and they, you know, I'm not, I'm getting better at, I'm not gonna say I'm not, I'm getting better at, at receiving compliments. Um, but you know, they say certain things and they say, well, I'm just I'm just a reflection of you, you know, and that really resonates with me because that's really all it is. We are reflections of each other. So we have to be willing to love each other enough to be able to see that whatever your brother has going on, whatever your sister has going on that you feel is good, know that you have the potential and ability to do it as well in your own way. Um, so we just got to be mindful of that. Um, I appreciate everybody sharing their feedback. Uh, we're going to begin to wrap it up. As always, share your, your testimonies, your feedback, your, your um, experience from what you learned from the lectures and from the classes that we have as well. Um, for those who haven't, be aware that on the premium side, we have a course that's available as well. So be, be sure to check that out. Leave your feedback on the course um, that is available that Brother Ben has uploaded. Always keep your fellow brother and sister in your prayers. Keep Brother Ben and his wife, their newborn, as, as he made an announcement in the uh, app as well, that uh, baby Elijah is, get, is getting stronger by the day. You know, so just keep his family in your prayers. Keep your fellow brother and sister in your prayers as well, because we all know life is life in, and we can't stop moving forward. So we always got to keep each other in our prayers so that we can continue to rise above emotions, continue to improve every day, and strive to be a better Muslim every day as well. Um, other announcements, again, if you want to upgrade, go to www.powercall.net. Upgrade if you're on an Apple 
or iPhone device, you will need to use your web browser. If you want to visit your local Muhammad Mosque study group, go to www.noistudygroup.com. Fill out the form. The sister will reach out to you, provide the location information for the local Muhammad Mosque study group nearest to you. Um, be sure to check it out. Friday will be here for you. Know it. So come on out to Self Improvement Study Group on Friday, or make it to your local Muhammad Mosque study group on Sunday for the public uh, lecture as well. As always, I appreciate everyone tapping in, sharing their feedback, making it to um, your power call. All praise is definitely due to Allah. And have a blacktastic day. And inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow. We have another exciting lecture. We're actually going to be listening to Mother Tynetta tomorrow. So stay tuned. Check it out. Uh, check your updates. Check your messages. Like I said, we always are trying to strive to keep the communication transparent and open. Um, so check your, your updates. Check your messages as well for updates as well so that you can make it to your power call. Make sure your access and everything is straight as well. Um, so just be, be mindful of that. And again, share your takeaways in the Power Call testimonial. So see you tomorrow, inshallah. Have a blacktastic day. Assalamu alaikum.